Hey guys, it's 101R Smith and I'm back. Today we're going to be looking at the high grade Gundam Dev Scythe from Gundam Wing. And now we have for the third year in a row a brand new high grade Gundam Wing After Colony kit. 2019 we had Sand Rock, 2020 we have Heavy Arms, and 2021 we have Dev Scythe. Now, Wing Gundam already got its more updated high grade release back in 2013 during the build up for Gundam Build Fighters, but you know, obviously now we have the real grade, which we will be getting to very soon. But now we have Death Sight, so now for those high grade builders out there, you have now four of the five Operation Meteor suits. It's been kind of teased a lot in so many different designs if you really think about it. We had Gundam the End back in Bill Fighters Try. We have the Love Phantom that was hearkening very heavily to Death Scythe. And now, finally, Bandai got it around to actually giving us the original Death Scythe. Even though we have parts for Death Scythe help, which I find ironic. It's kind of weird how Bandai decides how to proceed with their kids. But. We have Death Scythe, we have Zero Two, we have the God of Death himself, Duo Maxwell, and I'm pretty stoked because Death Scythe is a very simple suit in terms of aesthetic and design of weapons, but also just like the sleek black look, the Grim Reaper design, the Death Scythe itself, like the Beam Scythe, it's just so simple, but at the same time, just so characteristic, driven with the design, and just... I'm happy, as you guys know, I love Gundam Wing, so it's great that we're getting inching closer and closer to getting all five of the, at least the first suits from the first half of the show. And with modern engineering, this thing is gonna look great. So let's get to it. Let's open up the box and see what we have here. All opened up, built up, and we have Death Scythe, and it looks pretty great from all I can see. I went a little heavy with the panel lining, but I'm pretty, aesthetic about that because there's a lot of white with this kit. I was surprised with the lack of dark parts. A personal gripe, but I wish this was more in a very dark gray or very kind of kind of like a navy black instead of they went again with the very dark navy blue. I don't understand the color palette choice for some of these designs because back in the old days this would have been black. They went with navy blue. Maybe it was navy blue in the anime, but based on the color shades that I've seen throughout the anime, I consider this either a very dark gray or a neutral black, but that's a personal preference. And very few stickers. You got the basic eyes, the front camera. I will say the back camera sticker kind of sucks because you have to wrap around a circular area. And quite honestly, mine didn't stick well, so I kind of gave up with that. And of course, the red trim piece on the front skirt, that is a sticker. Somewhat disappointed by that because as we've seen with the ORX 78 Gun to Beyond, that no longer has to be a sticker, but I also have to remember, this is a high grade Gun to Wing kit. This isn't a UC kit. Bandai will go a little bit out for UC kits. And also it's in line with the rest of the Operation Meteor suits because they do have those little stickers for their trim parts or the vernier, so it's understandable. Outside of that, the colors look great, a neutral white, the navy blue, the yellow is like a nice cheddar yellow. It's not too orangey, but it's also not high yellow. It's like that neutral yellow. And I'm happy to say that those gray parts on the shoulders are actually their own separate pieces, they're not stickers, so that's a major improvement. But while the aesthetics look great, let's take a look at its articulation. As we always do, we start with the head. The head can go up and down. 360 is a little tight for me on my kit. I did take a flat coat to it, so that might be why it kind of doesn't go all the way but just be mindful that it is a little a bit of a tight connection if you do decide to top coat it. The shoulders, unfortunately they are not quite designed with the poly cap to go up. That's kind of built with the mechanism. It's more forward facing to get those nice scythe poses. So you're not gonna get that wide range 
going up, but of course they are connected. The shoulder and the arm are its own separate hinge and can go 360 degrees. The arm, simple bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, and of course with the hands they are the plug and play poly cap can go up and down and swivel. The chest, the chest articulation is pretty great. You can get a great wide 360 degree range and in terms of you're going to get some forward chest crunch the fact that just like sand rock and heavy arms it reuses all of the inner frame pieces from those two kits so you're going to get that front forward chest bump front and side skirts can go out especially if you cut out the front skirts and make them their own individual pieces you can get close to a 180 with the legs but not quite just something that's keeping it going all the way now the knees are engineered in a very interesting way so what they decided to do was they kind of have this double hinge so the knee is kind of locked and then you can move the knee armor out like unhinge it from its socket because it's connected to a ball joint and locks in you move the socket out and then you're going to get that extra knee hinge that you're going to be using a lot which really works well i thought it was actually really well designed Toes can go up and down, side to side. The ankle armor can move on its own. Of course, with the beam jamming system in his backpack, that can move forward and front. So you're gonna get a lot of articulation and a lot of it is forward thinking and kind of a little innovative for this kind of line of Gundam Wing kit. So that's awesome. Now, the Death Scythe doesn't really come with a lot of accessories, so this is gonna be pretty straightforward. First up, we're gonna look at the Death Scythe's Buster Shield. Buzzer Shield, I will be happy to report it's multiple pieces. You're going to get the gray, you're going to get the navy blue, the red, and the yellow. They're all separate, no stickers here. And you're going to get a lot of functionality with the Buzzer Shield. So the Buzzer Shield clamps on only to the left arm. So that's a little bit of a disappointment, but it is canonical with the show. You can obviously use it for protection, poses, dodging. You can brace it pretty well, and the connection's pretty tight. What makes the B Buster Shield for the Depth Scythe fun is that you get your own Beam Saber effect part for it. Because in the show, you can use it to launch and dart out on long-range enemies, so that's kind of, it was kind of like outside of the Vulcan cannons, Depth Scythe's only somewhat long-range weapon. So you can also use that as an offensive weapon close up. It would have been cool if they included a wire to recreate the blast out shots, but I figured that would be a bit too much. But if you can get your own separate, probably Bandai Tamashi Nation stand, you could probably recreate that fully. But as it is, I love the effect part. It looks very detailed, very strong neon green. And it works offensively as well, and it just, kind of complements Death Scythe so well. And of course, we would not be anywhere without the Beam Scythe itself. I know in Glory of the Losers, they renamed it to Beam Scissors, but we're sticking to Beam Scythe. With this Beam Scythe, you're actually gonna get two effect parts. So, you're gonna get, it's gonna be held with the traditional hands, but you also could use the Sandrock hands because those were left over in this part because they were all reused from Sandrock and Heavy Arms. So you're gonna get two kind of beam saber effects for the scythe. You're gonna get the big, wide beam saber effect, the beam scythe where you get a wide range, like you can knock out so many people and have like so many mobile suits getting their heads crushed with this. It's a little difficult to pose. You gotta really think out the posing, but the posability itself, the engineering is there. You just have to really think it out, but it does take up a wide range. You're also going to get a shorter beam scythe effect part because you can kind of connect it in the hinge where the holster for the beam effect goes in. You can recreate the, the third episode of Gundam Wing where Duo disables the self-destruct mechanism on Wing Gundam. Also, you can use it as an offensive weapon, which is eerily reminiscent of Shenlong. Bandar, are you trolling us again? Now they're just teasing us at this point. But besides that, you can kind of use it as a bayonet or just kind of like a bow weapon. So you get a little bit of a different offense for Death Scythe with this shorter beam effect part. Now you got him with his cohorts, Troa and Catra. 
and these guys look great they look in the same scale they are all three of these guys are very vastly designed well they look great and it's nice to get the wing boys closer together we technically have four because now we have a high grade and a real great option with wing gundam but we're missing Wu Fei here. I hope we get him sooner rather than later. And that's pretty much it for depth sight. I'm so sorry if this review seemed a little short in scale, but when it comes to depth sight, there really isn't too much to talk about. It's not like a Shrek Freedom or a Justice or a Double O. It's a very simplistic kit in terms of its design and its accessories. I will note that I didn't really talk about the collapse beam scythe that you can hold out and put it in the back of Depth Scythe's back skirt. I know Kakarot197 complained about it because he felt it was a downgrade in comparison to the 1995-144th Depth Scythe, but dude, Bandai kind of knows we're really not going to really use this, so it was kind of like they gave you that option because it should be there functionally, but... They know we're not going to use it, so I don't mind it having a lack of detail. I, again, I kind of wish that the navy blue was more of a dark gray or a, a neutral black to fit in with the Death Scythe color scheme from the anime. I could be wrong, it could be navy blue, a very dark navy blue that they use, but those 90s cell shaded color, that is black to me. I'm sorry, I'm just pet peeving. It's a great kit, you get a lot of great articulation here if they ever wanted to do death scythe hell all of the parts are here and you can recreate that you got the skeleton literally for death scythe hell with death scythe both in canon with the shell but also a model kit form it looks great very few stickers and it's just a really great kit and if you love gundams with a little bit more of a more characteristic design not just straightforward military I mean, all of the Gundam Wing kits have that in space, but especially Wing Gundam, anything in the Wing or Death Scythe family, they've got that. You've got Death Scythe in a more standard, a more modern interpretation, and Death Scythe looks amazing. Apocalypse. This kit is probably a little hard to get right now because of the gun plot shortage that's going around around the world. What's been going on in the last year and a half has finally caught up to our hobby. So getting these kits, especially the newer ones, is going to be a little harder. You might be having to spend a little bit more extra money than they're actually worth. If you can find this at about 30 ish dollars, go for it. I would not spend any more than 35 on my own opinion. But you want to add to the Gundam Wing collection that you have, go for it. And of course, I do have the real grade Wing Gundam. You will be seeing that in the very near future, in the next few weeks. But I'm doing something a little different and a little bit more special with it, so you will see that very soon. That will probably be the next review, but I promise this is going to be different than your average review. So, on that note, this is 101R Smith, and I will see you later. Peace!